What is up guys, it's Kelly from Muddy Beards 4x4. Today we're talking power steering pumps. Now I tore down two power steering pumps all the way to the inside, tore the guts out, TJ and a WJ pump Grand Cherokee. Why did I do that? I wanted to see what the difference is. So let's take a closer look. Before I get into the differences that I found between the TJ pump and the WJ pump, I'm going to walk you through my understanding of how a power steering pump works. I'm not an expert in this at all, um, but I'm going to walk you through what I know. If you guys know more than me, which some of you might, uh, please correct me. Let me know in the comments. So we got our, in this one, this is a modified WJ pump with external reservoir uh, input. So. Our reservoir input from our fluid comes into here, into the big, the big body section right here, into the whole, basically the body of the pump itself. So I'm going to walk through all the pieces here that I took out. So this sits in the bottom here of the pump body, all the way down the bottom. So I'm going to kind of stack it up from the bottom to the top. So the fluid comes in on these sides right here from the body of the pump. So from the reservoir, from the body of pump into here, which the rotor and the veins are inside of this piece right here. So I'm gonna try and put this together here as we go. See how that works out for me. Okay, so as it comes in from the side of the body here, it comes into uh, where the rotor creates the pressure. We got two high pressure sides and two low pressure sides. Because of the shape of the housing, it's kind of oblong, egg-shaped, uh, it's a very strange shape, but it's for a purpose, is as these veins pop out, as it's spinning, the RPMs go up, the veins pop out, creating more pressure, and the, the fluid gets trapped in between the veins, and as it compresses down, it squeezes that fluid and creates the high pressure side. And this is the end cap that's on the back of the pump, and this slides on here. Oh, there we go. So that's basically the hole inside of your power steering pump. Fluid comes in here, creates the pressure inside this middle section with the rotors. That built pressure comes, comes down into this bottom section here, which goes out into, through the body, down through, into your valving. So that's my basic understanding of how this power steering pump works. So let's get into what the difference I found between this WJ pump and the TJ pump. Okay, so let's look at the difference in the WJ pump and the TJ pump themselves. So let's start with the body of the pumps. Although they have the same bolt pattern and you can freely bolt them up to the TJ or the WJ, the bodies actually are slightly different on the inside. Okay, so here's the TJ pump. You can see the input. You might be able to see it where the it flows in. Might be able to see the end of my uh, screwdriver, pocket screwdriver here. There's a pretty small hole where the flow comes in from the reservoir, which is much smaller than the one for the WJ pump. So the input is much larger. So it's getting a lot more fluid into the body of this pump itself. And I do believe that the inside of the body of this pump is slightly bigger. <clears throat> As you can see on this one here, it's kind of got this little bit of a, a hump right here that gives the body a little bit more uh, space on the inside. And this one does not. It's actually thicker on the body here, which allows more, f more volume on the inside of the body of the pump. Okay, so this one is the TJ1 right here, and this is the WJ1 right here. I'm not exactly sure. They look absolutely identical except for these slots right here on the housing. So I used my micrometer and I was measuring all the, you know, the sizes of everything to see if there's any difference, and they are the same except for these slots right here, which appear to be pressure relief possibly because it's on the pressure side and I can see a little bit of light through this hole here from this pressure side 
So it might be a pressure relief. So I can see more pressure relief on the TJ one because this slot is bigger. You know, I might have got mistaken before. This one is the TJ one, the one with the bigger slot here and not with the two slots here. So this is the TJ one. So more fluid might be able to be bypassed and here's the top here so it just goes up into this little valley right here and it goes nowhere so i don't know if it's just a pressure relief for you know maybe noise or to be honest i really don't know so absolutely identical besides these little slots right here and again tj wj and the rotors themselves are absolutely identical except for there is a little bit of an edge right here on the WJ rotor. So it's not totally flat out to the edge. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but there's a slight edge here. And this is pretty much straight flat. And this one here, this pump was pretty much garbage. It looks like it's had a bunch of metal through it. You can see all the, the, the marring on the rotor itself and this one actually is nice and smooth. Which brings us to our flow control valves. So these are the flow control valves and springs and the outputs that go to the gearbox. So I'll take this, ah, I'm not prepared here. So this valve is from the TJ and springs. So the springs are identical and as you can see, the valving is not, if I can keep a hold of it. So inside of these valves there is a ball. You can see here there's kind of a, a filter, a screen on the inside of here. So the pressure comes into here and there is a ball and a spring that's regulating the pressure that comes out of your pump. And these also recirculate along with these the excess pressure back into the body of the pump to reuse the, the fluid that is not being used because it's building too much pressure. So on the TJ one, this hole is, I drilled it out already, this similar size to the WJ one because I was trying to make the TJ, the WJ pump work on the TJ pump. And so there's an obvious difference in this valving, in size and in the valves themselves. So the two big factors I believe that are making this WJ pump put out more pressure is because the volume in the body of the pump, which allows more fluid in, and obviously these rotors and this whole section in here are the same as the TJ. So I'm assuming that this flow control valve is allowing more of that pressure to go out to the, uh, the gearbox or the, uh, those cooling fans, wherever it's gonna be directed because it needs more of that fluid. So it's not gonna bypass a lot of that pressure like this TJ set up here. It's probably gonna bypass a lot more pressure into back into the body of the pump. So, like I said, I'm not a professional and that's just my opinion on why the WJ and the TJ are different. So I believe if you just went in and swapped out your control valve on your TJ pump, and you happen to have a WJ control valve setup going on, you're gonna to have to change this out because these are different size fittings here. If you drill this out and you run the WJ flow control valve on your TJ pump, you will probably get some sort of an upgrade. Now, I experimented with this and I wasn't super happy with it, so I ended up just buying the PSC power steering pump for the TJ, and so far I've been really happy with it. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, I know I did tearing these all apart, learned a lot about how these things work, and uh, it was really educational for me as well, hopefully for you too. If you guys like the videos that we're making here on Muddy Beards 404, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, it really helps us out. Check us out on social media, we got Instagram, we got Facebook, uh, follow us over there, and uh, we got a lot of more videos coming up here pretty soon, so stay tuned, and we will see you on the trail.